This brand new deck proves that there is still room for innovation in the modern format. This humans deck took down a Magic Online modern challenge, and then the next weekend top baited both weekend challenges. This may look like a normal humans list until we take a look at the last 8 cards here, where we see 4 Chancellor of the Annex and 4 Shining Shoals. These cards have a ton of text on them, so let's make it simpler. Chancellor counters the first spell played by your opponent unless they pay 1, but only if it's in your opening hand, and Shining Shoal allows you to exile a card from your hand to prevent damage done from any source, and then you can redirect that damage wherever you want. Both of these cards' effects cost 0 mana to play. These two cards, combined with Solitude, means that the early game advantage is insane from all the free spells at our disposal. I didn't believe that this deck was real until I finally tried it myself, and I am now super impressed with it. Blue-red Murktide decks usually pose a huge challenge for creature decks like humans, but not anymore. Even after this opponent removes a blocker for this Ragavan to attack us, we can just use a Solitude to answer it, exiling an Emiria's Call. Call is super important in this deck. Not only can you play it on its backside as a normal land, but you can also pitch it to a Solitude and Shining Shoal, and since the Shoal cares about the mana value of the pitched card, Call being 7 mana is actually an upside here. Now here we can see an Adeline, Pioneer All-Star, doing some real work versus Murktide. It allows the champion to grow 2 power in one turn, and we're now clocking our opponent for a ton of damage every turn. Since Adeline grows in power with each creature we play, until they find an Unholy Heat to remove her, she is going to take over this game, and that's exactly what we see here. We're making our opponent chump block with their channeler on this turn so they can get Delirium online for the next one, but since we have this Solitude in our hand, we are prepared to blow them out when they go to double block. Free spells, man. This really doesn't seem fair. Our sideboard is heavily prepared for this matchup. We have 4 Sanctifier and Vex, and 2 Sanctum Prelate, both cards that completely shut down a blue-red deck. This opening hand is a bit land-heavy, but the Aganjo being a removal spell, and Cavern making their counter spells much worse, makes me inclined to keep this. After the Esper Sentinel trades with a the Ragavan, they play a Channeler, which is pretty scary. Until I top deck the Sanctifier. This means they are never getting Delirium, never blocking, and they're going to lose very quickly. After an expressive iteration for them finds approximately nothing, we rip another Sanctifier, meaning we can now play a Champion and the Sanctifier, our board is huge, and our opponent is going to need a miracle to survive this. A seasoned Pyromancer doesn't do it, so we just attack in for another 4. The only way at this point for them to remove the Sanctifiers is with an Engineered Explosives, so I try my best to play around that by using these Dauntless Bodyguards to protect the Sanctifiers. After some more attacks, the opponent evokes a Fury, removing both the Bodyguards. They play a Murktide and my own Thalia from a Ragavan attack, and the board is getting a bit hard to deal with here. An Adeline is nice, it does mean that the next turn is going to be super good for us, and we get to attack for 6 this turn with a Champion. They decide to trade the Murktide and the Channeler for it before it grows too big, and then they have the Explosives to remove both our Sanctifiers. Now, I do make the mistake here of killing Mythalia, because she'll also die when the opponent cracks the explosive for 2, but it really doesn't matter. Somehow, this game continues on for 4 more turns, but eventually, we just use our creatures and tokens to grind out the last few points of life, finishing them off. Now, that match didn't do a ton to showcase the power of the free spells that this deck has, so let's instead watch a match I played versus... the Mirror? Already? Damn, people catch on quick. Since they revealed the Chancellor, it'll counter our first spell, unless we use Cavern to make our humans uncounterable. Sweet. We play a Bodyguard, and they play a Hopeful Initiate, and we're really hoping that we can get these Adelines to stick. They are super important in the Creature Mirrors, and our opponent seems to agree, so they Solitude the first one before we get to attack. Even though we have another one, we begin to fall really behind here, as a Lieutenant grows our opponent's board a ton. They spent 0 mana for their removal spell, so now they get to use all their mana to develop their board instead a super strong plan. It does look like we're beginning to get ahead here, as we are attacking for 5 with the Adeline, but their last two cards are Shining Shoal and Adeline. They pitch her to the Shoal, targeting my Adeline. This means that the next 3 damage she would deal is now dealt to herself instead, so when they block with a Champion of the Parish, she ends up dying. Pretty brutal. Thankfully, our board here is pretty large, and we do end up squeaking out a victory by leaving up enough blockers to ensure that we don't die as our extra tokens from Adeline get across that finish line. There is zero sideboarding needed in this matchup, so let's just move to game 2, where we see a very reasonable hand with a reasonable curve. Nothing too broken here. 
Our opponent's draws are significantly better than ours, however. They're able to start really pressuring our life total with the Aspirant and Lieutenant growing their board every single turn. We play an Adeline, and thankfully when they go to play one of their own, we are ready for it with a Solitude, so they're only attacking for a few damage with this Hopeful Initiate. We begin to really put the pressure on here. I'm not sure what our opponent could have to get them out of this one. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Seven damage to my face? Cool. Maybe these free spells are a little too good. Let's try this again in game three. We have a nice hand that puts a decent amount of pressure on the opponent, as well as stopping them from playing a card early because of the turn one Chancellor reveal. Sadly, the creatures they end up playing are way better than mine, so they begin to win the race here. We have a Shining Shoal that we can use to have the Aspirant deal for the four damage to itself, but they one-up me here by casting their own Shoal to have the damage that Aspirant would deal to itself instead deal the damage to my Thalia. Jeez, yeah, without any great way to stop my opponent's four power creatures, I just pack it up here. These Shining Shoals have been super impressive, I wonder where else they would shine. <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly sure I don't need to show you the rest of this match versus Burn. It is not close, especially when we get to board into Leyline of Sanctities and Sanctify Renvex. Is this new modern deck actually the truth? We'll just have to wait and see, but until it stops dominating the Magic Online challenge, I think it's fair to say that this is going to be a real player in this format. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, or if you want to see more content like this, check out this Magic gameplay video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, everyone.